So as you can see, we've got an illustrious panel of experts and again, I encourage you to put your questions through the app and uh, I will hand to our first speaker, April McKenzie. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Oh, yep. that's not me. <laughs> It worked in practice, and we might go backwards or try again. Well, you yell at me when it comes up, and I'll see it here probably. Well, thank you, Rachel. I'm very pleased to be here um, along with my colleagues and in front of you to talk about building a global valuation expertise. In fact, actually, it's more than an expertise. It's a profession. Valuations are central to decision making within the global economy, applying both to capital and property markets. And decisions and actions, whether in the private or public sectors, the public interest, economic growth, and the development of financial systems are impacted in many ways by decisions and actions that are dependent on valuations. Prudential regulation and banking insurance, perhaps with respect to mortgaged and secure, secured lending. The valuation determines the loan amount and risk exposure to the lender with respect to all sorts of various types of securities, such as real estate, tangible assets, financial derivatives, and shares of privately held companies, just to give you a few examples. With regards to taxation, Taxes on estates, stamp duties, corporate and personal um, disposition of assets all require valuation to determine an equitable amount to be tax, of, of tax to be paid. Valuation plays an important role in determining the quantum of taxes to be paid in relation to disposing of assets, such as in the context of corporate reorganisation or immigration. In the M&A context, Valuation is an integral part of the process, providing target screening, industry pricing, value analysis based on the target standalone outlook and capabilities, quantification of potential merger synergies, and ultimately, the valuation of assets acquired for price determination and financial reporting. Private par public private partnerships in the building of infrastructure where the private party provides a public service or a project and assumes a substantial uh, financial, technical and operational risk in the project, valuation can determine the ownership contribution of each party, whether in cash or assets or expertise, to ensure fair contributions from all parties. Financial reporting you're probably very familiar with, and valuation plays a part in the accounting estimates for fair value, for impairment, for purchase price allocation. In the context of val valuations in a litigation, for example, the issue is typically related to shareholders' disputes, family disputes over inheritance, or breaches of corporate agreements. The ultimate claim or award will be based on a valuation. Compulsory purchase or dispossession of land or assets, you might call it eminent domain. You might call it compulsory purchase, resumption, or expropriation. But either way, they refer to the power to take private property for public use by a state or national government. That property may be taken either for the government's use or for delegation to third parties. The level of compensation is determined through a process of valuation and is critical to the party that's been dispossessed of the asset. In light of the impact of valuation on a wide range of matters, and these were just a few examples, there is a need to ensure that the valuation profession has the capacity to undertake its work in a, in a profession and credible manner that gives a central role to standards, ethics, independence, objectivity, competence, and transparency. And that's where the International Valuation Standards Council fits in. It was established in the 1980s, primarily focused at the time on real estate valuation. It expanded its mandate in 2008 to establish standards applicable 
to, for all purposes of valuation and across all assets and liability categories. It's a membership organisation with uh, 83 members from 54 countries, including a number of accounting bodies, and that number is increasing. The International Valuation Standard Council's mission is to establish and maintain effective, high-quality international valuation and professional standards, and to contribute to the development of the global valuation profession, thereby serving the global public interest. This is a quick picture of our structure with the Board of Trustees at the centre, two standard-setting boards, the professional board from which Morrow and Doug are members, there are nine members in total, and the Valuation Standards Board, again, nine members. The advisory forum pictured here in the circle at the bottom are the valuation professional organisations, and they advise uh, and, and are consulted in return, and the IVSC Council is made up of all of the members of the IVSC. The International Valuation Standards Council is led by Sir David Tweedy, one of the most influential players in the global financial stage, and we're really pleased to have our chairman here today. The IVSC ensures a collective voice for the profession and has built strong uh, alliances with the International Federation of Accountants through a Memorandum of Understanding and with the IFRS Foundation and the International Accounting Standards Board through a statement of protocols. The coordination and the development of the distinct respected global valuation profession is at the key cornerstone of our mission. Primarily, the real estate valuation profession is largely established and has uh, a mature foothold in many markets. The business valuation part of the profession is developing. We find in Canada, Singapore and the Middle East individual standalone valuation professions. A number of accounting organisations, such as the AICPA, the Chartered Accountants of Australia and New Zealand, the ICAEW and others have valuation uh, expertise inside their accounting requirements. I'm going to leave Moro and Doug to talk uh, about the professional boards and Sir David to speak more about the other aspects of the IVSC but I want to mention just one of our initiatives that I thought you would find particularly interesting, and that is the APEC initiative. That's the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum, an initiative that covers 21 economies, the United States, Canada, Chile, Peru, Mexico, Russia, Japan, China, Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, Australia, New Zealand, just to name around about half of them, uh, so many people in this room, their economies are affected by this initiative. The ministers of finances of those 21 economies recently met in Beijing and have recognised the work of the International Valuation Standards Council and have called for collaboration between business leaders, valuation professional organisations, experts from industry and public sector to promote high quality valuation practices and professionals across all 21 APEC economies. They want this to be done through the recognition uh, of region-wide recognition and convergence towards robust global valuation standards and the development of sustainable valuation professional organisations as caretakers of professional standards, education and knowledge depositories. The project involves a full map or audit of the valuation landscape across all 21 economies and across all of the disciplines, both real estate and business valuation. We are establishing a template of best practice to help those economies in five key areas. Regulation and compliance frameworks, what legislative requirements should be put in place, what organisational frameworks such as professional organisations are required, what minimum education and training standards or, or benchmarks should be set, the importance of access to information and disclosures in the preparation and dis, uh, dissemination of valuation work, and the convergence towards global robust valuation and professional standards. We will run a number of workshops in pathfinder economies to help build the profession across the asset classes. 
the IVSC hopes that you'll get involved and look forward to touching base with you after this presentation on how to get involved with the IVSC. So Rachel, thank you for this opportunity and thank you for listening.